Sex, for most living things, is at the top of their bucket list. But it's a time and energy consuming enterprise. It can even be dangerous. Take the oyster, maybe the animal most prolific at making sex cells. Every summer, an oyster transforms most of its body into either eggs or sperm. Imagine if every summer you lost nearly all your muscle mass and fat so you could prep your body for sex. That would require a lot of energy. What if we could divert that energy? What if we could stop the oysters from having sex, allowing them to be fat year round? Well, then you'd always have a fat oyster, an ideal seafood product. These ever fat sterile oysters and the technology to produce them was created decades ago. And now these genetically sterile oysters make up the vast majority of oysters farmed in Virginia. But if there's one thing we should have learned from nature by now, it's that life finds a way. Sterile oysters are not always sterile. Last year, we found some supposedly sterile oysters filled with eggs. What's more, these oysters came from a commercial farm that was experiencing an unusually high rate of oyster mortality. Death rates of oysters were high on several farms last year. In one case, a farm lost 85% of their total oysters. That's a lot of oysters, but it's also a lot of money. Most farms won't be able to stay in business at that rate. So what's the common link among the farms that took a hit last year? They were all exclusively growing sterile oysters. This doesn't seem like a coincidence. Perhaps we're witnessing a relationship between sex and death in sterile oysters. What about these oysters are making them fertile? And why would this restoration of reproductive capability cause them to die? In other words, why are they behaving this way? Well, just like walking and talking, sex is a behavior. And what controls your behaviors? Is it your genes? Is it the environment? Someone wiser than me put it this way. Genes load the gun and the environment pulls the trigger. We've created different ammo by producing eight genetically different varieties of sterile and non-sterile oysters. And we've recruited different marksmen by deploying these oysters to three commercial farms on the Eastern Shore. We've now set the trap to catch the culprit and his murder weapon. Next spring, we'll carefully check our trap every month to assess oyster survival, condition, and of course, how good these oysters are at sex. Make no mistake of it, this is a murder mystery, one that requires a thorough investigation into the right combination of factors to cause mass oyster deaths. But it's also a look into how sex can prevail over genetic manipulation. Life finds a way, but at what cost? Thank you.